Hi, welcome to another Turbo Camaro .ca video production. As you can see here, I've got the Chevy 250 straight six engine upside down on my little stand, and we're going to be starting the assembly today. So it's not necessarily going to be an entire video on how to assemble an engine, and I really don't want to make it an actual video uh, entirely on how to rebuild an engine. I'm not a master mechanic. I, I don't believe I have the knowledge to be able to accurately go through step by step on how to do this. I mean, I'm going to do it myself, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to bore you with insane levels of detail on something that you could probably find a, an actual mechanic providing you step by step instructions. For example, um, I know somebody online I've watched routinely is uh, Pete's Garage. He has an excellent I think, 12 or some odd step video series on how to individually go through each component and install it. Uh, it's, it's excellent. I'll probably be referencing it in this build myself. But that being said, I would like to go through some of the things that make the 250 build a little bit different than the typical V8 or, or you know, Honda 4-cylinder or whatever it might be. So this is a semi-unique engine. There's not a lot of these. There's a lot of these engines, but there's not a lot of video content on how to deal with the internals of it. So as you can see here, uh, I've got the bearings all laid out for the crankshaft. Uh, something unique about this is that uh, once the bearings are in, like any engine, you've got the rear main seal at the back here. It's a two-piece rear main seal that's built into the block. Uh, when it's installed, you want to have the one end of it, the lip up about about a finger's width or three eighths of an inch, something like that, so that it has a better uh, meeting surface in the end. So that's going to be something that's a little, little bit different. Uh, beyond that, as I mentioned, the crankshaft, it has... Uh, basically it's it's in line for a six so it's it's actually quite a bit longer than the typical crankshaft and it, it's quite heavy of course so a little bit more awkward than maybe dealing with a smaller v8 crankshaft or of course a four so that's something to think about um going through the the pieces i've got from the machine shop they gave me all my bearings and thrust bearing and stuff it's important to inspect everything before you go through it you can see here the, the surfaces of these i have to think that they're I'm not, you know, very familiar with uh, part brands and whatnot, but the stuff that they've supplied me seems to be of very high quality. Uh, I can't find any defects in anything. The just the gauge of everything seems really good. Uh, the thrust bearings, um, something to look for that you'll see in other videos, is that they are of higher quality. They they're all one piece machined. I mean, they might be welded together, but they're such a good job. Uh, that uh, I think that they're just a high quality piece compared to some things I've seen before. Um, something else to look at is here. You haven't really seen any of the other engine parts that I've got, so let's take a look now. Uh, I've got lots of supplies here, of course, but uh, the pistons. Uh, they, it's an Easter picture I put out. You can see here, these are the Ross Racing pistons. They're uh, uh, 0 .070 or 70 over, so they're a little bit bigger than the the stock pistons you can get a lot of times stock or uh, even oversized you'll get a 60 over at max these are 70 so i took them a step further a couple reasons for that one when i took apart the block that it was already 60 over so in order to machine it properly i had to go a step up uh, also this allows me if i were to crack this block or, or something bad were to happen and the piston survived i'd be able to take these out and probably put them in almost any block uh, I mean, that's you know maybe a stretch, but it, it wouldn't I wouldn't have to search the earth for you know a twenty over or a forty over block if I you know couldn't find one and and being that I live on an island and that I've not a lot of access to other um, motors and whatnot, it'd be nice to be able to have a wider range of blocks to be able to use. Uh, these are the stock connecting rods; they're forged. Uh, they got machined obviously as well, and I had the stock bolts replaced with ARP bolts. They are um, this essentially is a you know what you'd call a bulletproof package here. I mean they're not uh, any kind of H beam forged rods or anything like that, but they are uh, you know they are a solid. A very solid unit. I'm probably good to five or six hundred horsepower without too much of a concern. So that is going to be excellent. Uh, there's no piston rings on those yet. I've gone ahead and done the piston rings on um, on a, at a different time. I sat there and went through the block and did them one by time. It's important to make sure that the rings are, are gapped of what you need them gapped to. The the pistons came with a, a gap to fit um, ring, and I had to basically go through them one at a time now the, the manufacturer's recommendation was probably wanting them at somewhere in the in the, the 14th uh 14 thousandth of an inch so zero one four i um 
I put them to 019. The reason I increased the gap was because it's a turbocharge application. There's actually various uh, stats as far as whether or not you want it to go um, you know, zero to 15 PSI, or if you want to be going 15 or above. So I'm probably going, you know, going to be shooting for 10, 12, something like that. So I didn't want to go crazy. So I just bumped it into the sort of the middle to higher range of that zero to 15 PSI. So that should, is the zero one nine is where I went to. They're all exactly the same. The first and second oil rings are, are exactly the same. And um, that should be good. And then the Camshaft is over here. It's a Comp Cams custom grind. Uh, they told me in email that it's the only one they've made. It was completely custom. They had to basically make it up. I think that was because of a certain lift and duration and uh, all the specs that I specifically asked for. And that being a 250, there's probably not as many people performance building these engines. So I was uh, lucky enough to get a very unique cam. And we'll kind of go through that a little bit more maybe once we get the um, to the camshaft stage. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to use the um, this Ultra Select Permatex assembly lube here, uh, or assembly grease on the uh, different bearings here. Let's get them just greased up. I'm going to drop the crankshaft in, and we're going to use the plastic gauge to just make sure that I'm actually good for clearances. I've uh, never used plastic gauge before, but I've watched uh, 100 videos on how to do it. So we're going to try that out and see what we get. So all the caps were torqued down to 65. I actually did them to 30 and then went around and then I did them to 65 and did them around. So I torqued to spec and I put the uh, the green plastic gauge in there. There's probably a better plastic gauge for this than for this particular measurement. This green stuff, it just doesn't do the range that you'd probably want to do to measure this small of a clearance. This stuff does to 001 to 003. And really, I need to get this clearance has to be between 0003 to 003. So it will work, but it only gives me about, you know, like a quarter or half of the range that I could possibly be within. But I can take a pretty good look and see here. So uh, just taking a look at the first, uh, right at the end here, you can see that wax strip is there uh, for mine. It, it, it's It was probably a bit uh, lubed when I did it, so it wasn't the greatest, but you can see... Uh, I've already kind of measured it. The wax strip is about 002. It could be slightly bigger than 002, which is actually ideal. Um, any bigger than that, if I get into the 003, uh, as you can see here, uh, maybe the 003 is the, the very, uh, I guess, the thinnest that this, or the biggest that this can measure, if you will. And it, uh, you know, that's basically the end of the line for the clearance. So really, I think I'm at the top end of the uh, of the spec, but it's uh, that's that's fine. That's that's perfectly within clearance. So that's good. I've already gone and done and the rest of them. They're all pretty much exactly the same. Slightly smaller than zero zero two. So it's going to be zero zero, you know, one five or something like that, which is uh, which is great. So not a big deal there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up again. I'm going to re put the caps back on again, retorque them down. We'll check the uh, end play, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, consider doing the camshaft next. So camshaft's been reinstalled, and it's uh, all torqued down. So what I ended up doing for the final installation was doing 20 foot-pounds, 40, 60, and then I went to about 68 or so. Uh, 67, 68, just on a final last sort of check over. Uh, 250 has a, a different head bolt here. It's got one with threads, and that's for the oil pump to fasten to. So you got to make sure that is uh, a second back, second cap back from the uh, the rear of the engine there. I almost actually had that uh, mistakenly put on this one, not realizing, and then I had to switch it kind of at the last minute. So either way, that's got to go there for the oil pump. And uh, now we're going to get into the camshaft. You should actually, real quick here, should be able to turn this by hand. Yeah, so I can turn it by hand here. It's uh, it's stiff uh, a little bit, but then you know it's not uh, not running, and it, it is a, a longer. Uh, and you can hear the hear the oil is actually going squishing around in there. So all good. I don't want to do it too much because I've got just got the assembly lube in there. So now I do want to install the camshaft. It's actually very easy in this motor because the uh, you can actually see the the pathway here. So I'm going to uh, lube up the uh, the bearings that were pre-installed by the machine shop. And then I'm going to lube up the the journals on the actual camshaft there with the the comp cams lubricant, and then I'm going to push it through, obviously through the front of the motor here. Now you'll have to notice 250 again, a little difference. Uh, the the uh, plate that goes on it to hold it down, 
the retaining plate is actually built onto the camshaft behind the gear and the gear is pressed on as well. Uh, a lot of V8s and stuff of course have chains, uh, a little bit different than this setup. These have two meshing gears for the crank and cam and you can see here behind, behind it all there's the uh, retainer there. So you actually access it by holes in the gear so that I can fasten it down. So screws are on here. I'll remove the screws. We'll slide it in and oh, there goes one and we'll uh, fasten it down and making sure to use uh, some sort of a thread locker. I think a red or blue red uh, Loctite on these to make sure they don't slide out on us and we'll get that meshed up. So the camshaft is installed. I've got the uh, retaining plate fastened with the screws and the screws have a bit of the blue Loctite on them. You could probably go with red too, that'd be just fine, but I went with the blue because that's what I have. Medium strength should be more than good enough to hold that. Uh, so from there I went and replaced the gasket in the oil pump and oil pump is fastened and you can see here it fastens to where that threaded um, cap bolt was earlier so now it's tightly fastened on there uh, I didn't replace the mesh it looked pretty good I mean it, it looks grimy but it's good enough I think so I'm not too worried about that uh, obviously I've got to do the seal and stuff a little bit later I've just got it there more so I wouldn't forget than anything and um, now I'm gonna go ahead and start installing the pistons so pistons are down here a uh, little bit tricky I wasn't it took me a little bit to figure this out uh, you can see here I've kind of got it prepped to be installed uh, pistons all cleaned up nice uh, they, like I said earlier, the machine shop did the wrist pins for me, so I didn't have to use any kind of a spiral lock or anything. Uh, on this particular piston, there is no dot or arrow in order to determine which way it goes. So, looking at it, uh, the text, in this case, is what goes towards the front of the engine. So in this case, I've got my gearing here on the front. The text will go towards the front. Uh, it also works out that the tanks, the little uh, notches that are actually in the uh, connected rod uh, uh, cap here or the off the bearings those tangs are actually going to be on the driver side of the engine which actually works out also to be opposite the camshaft which is usually consistent for uh, how you build an engine so without any dot or arrow I just got a little bit sidetracked had to figure that out but now that it's uh, that's the case I can uh, continue so I've got uh, this pre-lubricated with the assembly lube I've got the bolts covered which is a little bit of a transparent hose and then I've used just some electrical tape which is a little bit rubbery uh, to block off any of the other scratchy bits that might uh, score the wall cylinder walls as I install it so I'm gonna flip it over I'm gonna use this um, just a hokey uh, piston ring compressor and drop them in I've got the piston rings uh, or sorry that yeah the rings they're gapped as I said earlier and now they're installed according to the manufacturers instructions you can see here that um, pretty much the top and second compression ring are opposite each other and then the top oil ring is down the bottom and the bottom oil rings at the top and the um, oil ring basically uh, spreader expander whatever you want to call it is uh, just off uh, sort of underneath the top ring it sounds a bit confusing but follow the instructions provided with your uh, your rings and you should be just fine so I've done that to this one here and I'm going to go in and install all the pistons now all right so I was finished with the camshaft install I went to go check out my camera and realized that the video didn't record and I was not going to take it out just so I could do it again. It's a relatively simple process anyway, just be careful. Uh, just like the whole process, be extremely careful. You want to make sure that you're paying full attention to what you're doing, make sure that all your surfaces are extremely clean and that uh, you're basically just taking your time and, and just sort of looking as you go. It's kind of like looking before you cross the street kind of thing. You have to really pay attention to what you're doing. If you don't, it can end up with uh, some serious problems like this. Uh, as I did one of the connecting rods earlier, uh, you can see here that uh, this is just, uh, I think it was number cylinder number two. Somehow or another, the electrical tape that I had didn't wasn't on tight enough or something like that, and the bearings spun around just ever so slightly. So then when I brought the cap up, to mate with the with the, uh, the the two surfaces, it actually was sort of pressed onto the uh, the upper bearing, which caused an overlap. And the overlap, as you can see, caused a they caused a bit of a lip right there. And it doesn't look like much, but that right there would be a serious problem. It would be it would make the, basically make the clearance impossible. You know, it might crush and it might work. 
but it would eventually lead to a premature failure almost certainly. You can see on this side the coating is gone. It, the surface of that, it, it, it's scuffed, but it's not horrible. You could probably do worse, but at the same time, it wasn't going to work for me. Um, the bearings I'm using are these. They're Clevit, Clevite, uh, Mali bearings. They're good bearings. Uh, those are the ones I had earlier. Nothing wrong with the bearing at all. It's totally my fault. I wasn't paying enough attention going too fast. Like I thought I'd done one and I could just do them all real fast, but just don't do that. Uh, you really want to take your sweet time, especially at this stage. Everything done here is, is critical and you don't want to have to be pulling the engine to, you know, to get to this point again. So be careful with that. Um, just going over here, you'll see uh, as I went through the engine, I got the blue line there, highlights my year of the 250. Uh, the important ones, of course, were the cylinder head bolts being, um, they'll be 95, uh, except for the three bolts that I've got for the um, the lump ports, so they'll be 85. And then the 35 for those connecting rods I mentioned, and those main bearings were in being 65. I think I cheated and went to 68 or so, but that's fine, I guess. And then uh, once you get to the flywheel, it's 60 and... And then, of course, the, uh, the damper, as well, I'll talk about here. Uh, damper on the 250 is, is pressed on by factory, at least in these years, anyway. And uh, that's fine, but it's a little bit tricky for the home user to do. You can, and a lot of people do, just take a block of wood and just beat the hell out of it and get it on there. And that may work just fine, and it's probably been done for, you know, 40, 50 years. But it can be bad on those thrust bearings that we showed earlier, and we, we just don't need to, uh, you know, issues with that. So... Uh, in this case, I actually had the machine shop drill the front of the crank with a, um, a threaded bolt. So you can see here, that's what I've got going on there. It's a stock bolt that you'd use for that. And it um, allows you to use an install tool. And then it also allows you to use a retaining bolt after, which is nice for safety. Uh, this, this tool is great for the ability to install that damper as well as being able to rotate the engine. Uh, I wouldn't want to rely on it rotating an engine that's completely assembled, but it does work fine for doing, uh, you know, your valves later on and doing, <clears throat> and doing the um, all the connecting rods and things like that. So very handy. And of course, I just had this made up. Uh, it was, you know, just like a bolt and a piece of half inch rod. Nothing too special. That's actually a gallery plug from when the engine was disassembled. Uh, it's one of the leftover ones, and uh, it works perfectly as that uh, to go over the nose of the crank so that you can fully seat the damper. Uh, it probably cost me, you know, maybe ten dollars worth of supplies to have this made, and uh, the actual install tool goes anywhere from twenty to a hundred, depending on where you live and what you have access to. So that's a good point. Uh, beyond that, I'd like to talk about a few things. Now I'm going to jump ahead here. Since we lost the video, I decided to jump ahead. This is where we're at. And take a better look here. So lots of gray, lots of black in the painted engine bay. There's a video for that, of course. Manifold, there's a video for that. Cylinder head, there's a video for that. There's videos for pretty much everything at this point, but there's going to be a whole lot more because uh, there's things I do want to talk about um, as we go. So the rest of the build is more or less the straight, the same as a, as a V8 would be. Uh, there are a few maybe differences or things that would be you know something to consider. Uh, for one is the oil pan gasket and this engine. It's uh, got a kind of a unique setup with the timing chain cover or the timing uh, gear cover. You can see here that the gear cover actually acts as the bottom of the oil pan surface. So you have to put the timing uh, cover on and then put the oil pan bolt on and the bottom of that timing cover is, is what the oil pan actually meets against. So it's kind of one of those things where you have to kind of put one on to put the other on. And then you got, of course, to deal with multiple mating surfaces with multiple gaskets. You got a four-piece gasket with this. And then, of course, the timing cover has its own gasket. So it's not extremely uncommon, but at the same time, a, you're, you know, there's not a lot of availability for, um, I guess, better gaskets. You can't get a one-piece silicone, at least not that I'm aware of, not that I can find. If you know of one, please forward me the link. I would potentially pull this to... To, uh, to swap it. So a uh, cork gasket, I use Gaskinich, I think that's how you pronounce it, Gaskinich, uh, along the, basically all the mating surfaces and in the corners uh, where the rubber meets the cork and uh, just all the overlapping areas, I use the Permatex Ultra Black uh, sealant. So it's you know, maybe a little bit difficult to get that off later. And unfortunately with cork gaskets, you get some of this squish. Uh, even with the gas niche on there, it squishes a bit. That being said, um, it's expected with cork, it's going to have some squeeze factor, uh, but it, it does work pretty well, at least for some period of time. Hopefully the uh, gas niche will keep it working well. 
Uh, beyond that, everything else is is pretty much almost done. There's a few last minute things, of course. I got the power string pump just dangling there. I've got um, these aren't this manifolds aren't actually mounted because there's some uh, few more uh, install things to do with that. Uh, I'll show you in a separate video. I've got to do uh, over here. I got to finish up with the fuel pump. He did that modified fuel pump and it's going to have hoses run to it and whatnot. And of course the carburetor and things like that and fan belts and radiator intercooler. And that gets of course into the turbo stuff. I just finished ordering the rest of the turbo supplies. I got little hoses and fittings and whatnot. I was trying to gather before I got into that. Uh, engine is going to be run before run and broken before I install all that uh, so that I got a nice clean certainly working engine before I get into the, the big stuff so stay tuned for all of that there's lots of videos to come here and I'll be doing a lot more interior sound system uh, and exterior videos as well so lots of stuff to go here we're just getting started feel free to subscribe uh, if you want to keep up with this on uh, to this YouTube channel as well as uh, checking out turbocamaro.ca for for more information. Thank you for watching.